Patricia Gibson. Thank you, Madam Chair, and I do appreciate you calling me at this time. Um, and just for the purposes of clarity to my colleagues, I have made a request to leave the debate just a little bit early. Um, so I'm thankful that Madam Chair has allowed me the opportunity to speak in this very important debate, which I would have been very sad to, to miss out on. Um, and I'd also like to thank the Honourable Member for Brentwood and Ongar for bringing this important debate forward. Um, I think this is a group in society, a group of young people that really need as much support as we in this place can possibly provide for them. Because young people who are leaving care are in the unique position of having the state as corporate parents and whose educational, health and employment outcomes, sadly, are significantly poorer than their peers. And the support these young people are able to access, I believe, must be monitored and reviewed periodically and must be shaped by the lived experience of care leavers to ensure that it is effective and responsive to their particular needs. But the facts are surrounding support, the DWP support for care leavers, the facts are that these figures make for uncomfortable reading. A disproportionate number of our care leavers are having support removed or live with punitive sanctions being imposed upon them by the welfare system. Care leavers have reported problems with having financial support removed and this, this affects them acutely, perhaps more acutely than many other sections of the population, because they often don't have family or indeed even social support during the time when financial support is withdrawn. Recent information uncovered by the Children's Society has revealed that in England, between 2013 and 2015, nearly 4,000 sanctions have been applied to care leavers, representing one sanction for every 13 of their number. Indeed, care leavers in England are three times more likely to have had a benefit sanction compared to the general working age population, which faces one sanction for every 39 people. But we can be pretty sure, and this has already been pointed out, we can be pretty sure that the true number of care leavers facing a sanction is likely to be far higher than these figures would suggest. The DWP currently collects information on self-reported care leavers, which means if a care leaver doesn't identify their status, they are simply not included in these figures. And it is this practice that has encouraged the First Minister of Scotland to announce a root and branch review of the care system in Scotland, which will be driven by the experience, the lived experience of those in care, and has taken into account the views of 1,000 young people who have experienced care. As we know, the outcomes for care leavers really quite badly trail behind their peers, so doing more to help them to achieve positive destinations will have a, a significant impact on their future, despite the, 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 the many varied challenges they may have faced in their past. The past can't be changed, but we can change what their future might look like. The Care Experience Employability Programme is a one-year pilot project in Scotland to help 270 young care leavers between the age of 16 to 29 to move into appropriate work training or educational opportunities and this will be led by the third sector at Young Persons Consortium which consists of Bernardo Scotland, Action for Children and the Prince's Trust and this will enhance and add value to existing youth employment provision for those young people who are often excluded from attaining their full potential through education and employment. By supporting more young care leavers to access employment training, training and educational opportunities and by working to close the attainment gap with their peers, we can send a clear signal that improvement in supporting this group of young people is absolutely necessary. And I hope today that the Minister is able to set out some clear actions to tackle the fact that in England, 40% of care leavers who are not in education, training or employment um, is a very poor comparison compared with 14% of their peers in the same position. Indeed, in Scotland, 78% um, of care leavers reached positive destinations within three months of leaving secondary education. But that still is not good enough, given that the figure for their peers is 93%. I also hope that the Minister is able to indicate how the government will tackle the fact that their own figures show that nearly one in five care leavers between the ages of 19 and 21 were in accommodation considered either unsuitable or the suitability of which is not known. The reoffending rates of care leavers in England are now four times for those of all other young people. 
and a recent study by Her Majesty's Inspector of Prisons found that 27% of young people in young offenders' institutions, which it surveyed, had previously been in care. But when female young offenders were examined, the figure rose to 45%. This situation represents a huge swathe of wasted opportunity and potential. And it's hoped that the Children and Social Work Act 2017, which came into force in April, will be able to help turn around these tragedies which lie behind these particular figures. And I ask that the Minister looks carefully at some of the recommendations from the Children's Society to help our care leavers reach their true potential. The introduction of an apprenticeship bursary, which has been mentioned, which will support care leavers during the first year of their apprenticeship, would provide better financial support ensuring better long-term employment prospects for care leavers. The early warning system for care leavers at risk of sanction to see if should be looked at to see if this reduces the level of sanctioning um, and that must be explored further by the DWP. Those in the DWP should ensure that universal credit is tailored to meet the particular circumstances of care leavers. Communication between Job Centre Plus staff and care leavers should be more flexible. For example, the use of texting where appropriate, if this will simplify communication. A whole raft of measures have been proposed, some of which will not cost very much at all, but could have significant and lasting impacts on the lives and long-term prospects of care leavers. So I ask the Minister today that, to ensure that all of these issues are fully and carefully considered and explored by the government, so that we can ensure that fewer and fewer of our care leavers fall through the cracks when they are young and consequently find that they are never able to catch up and reach their full potential. Because if they don't reach their full potential, not only is this not good for care leavers, it's not good for our society. The support from the DWP can and should always seek to be more creative, innovative and responsive to the lived experience of our young care leavers. They are too important to be left behind.